In this video, we're going to talk about how do you calculate sessions in Google Analytics, as well as answer a user question from our Google Analytics course forums. Now, if you like this video or if you want to learn more about Google Analytics, we encourage you to download our periodic table of Google Analytics. With these hundreds of elements, you can learn Google Analytics from the inside out and make sure that you understand everything that happens within Google Analytics. To learn more, visit jefflytics.com slash PT of GA. Now it's time to discuss sessions in Google Analytics and to answer a specific question from Analytics course customer Noel. Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about how do you calculate sessions in Google Analytics. And if you're interested in Google Analytics, I would encourage you to check out our material on the periodic table of Google Analytics. You can get to it and learn about all these elements at jefflytics.com slash PT of GA. So in particular in this video, we are going to talk about sessions in Google Analytics. Now you might know a little bit about sessions, but I just want to clear the air and tell you exactly what I know about them. First of all, Google Analytics defaults to having sessions last for 30 minutes. This is in the settings of your property in Google Analytics. And as you can see, the default setting is to have it last for 30 minutes. And what that means is that anything that happens during a 30 minute window of activity, Google is going to consider to be part of one session. Here's a visual that's going to help you better understand it. And if you want to, you can read this blog post in the link below. Basically, when the first page view happens, a session starts and then everything that happens in between up to a 30 minute window of inactivity is considered to be part of one session. So you can go to a website, you can view hundreds of pages. As long as you don't take 30 minutes in between each hit, then you are all part of one session. And you're probably wondering then, well, what is a hit? A hit is most commonly a page view, but also it can be an event. If somebody does event tracking of something that happens within a page, an e-commerce transaction, or even a social interaction. Now, the most common type of hit that you're going to see is a page view. So when you think about it from the perspective of a web browser, the little spinny thing that happens in a web browser, whenever that completes, whenever that stops spinning, that is a page view. And that's basically what makes things go round in Google Analytics. Every time that a page finishes loading, you know that a page view is happening and it's extending your session. If you don't see that thing spinning for a while, namely over 30 minutes, then your session is most likely going to end. Now, there are things that can happen within a page, which we call event tracking, that will extend your session even longer. And if you have questions about that, we will get to them a little bit later in this video. The other thing we should note about sessions is that you can change the way that Google handles the default timeout in the analytics tool. You can lower this all the way down to one minute and you can maximize it up to four hours of a session. Now, why would you do this? Well, the common example I would give is that say that you're Netflix and you are letting people watch movies on your website. They may be inactive for as much as two hours while watching a movie. And so a 30 minute timeout would mean that even though they're all still sitting there watching this movie, since they haven't loaded the page, since they haven't moved their mouse, they're going to be showing as two different sessions. You would want to unify them and make them one session because it really is one viewing session. So in most cases, you can trust the default of 30 minutes, but there are specific use cases for specific types of businesses that might want to make this either lower or higher. But remember that if you do change your session window, you are going to affect all of your future data and it's going to make any historical comparison an apples to oranges comparison. So you'll never be able to compare your old traffic to the new traffic because they're being calculated completely differently. So if you decide to do this, if you decide to change your session window, it's not to be taken lightly. It's a big deal. So one of our students in analytics course, Noel, asked a question about sessions because he watched the videos, he's seen these definitions, but he just wanted to know a little bit more about how these things work. Now, this is a pretty long and complex question, so I'm going to break it down into pieces here, and we're going to get into it. Basically, he's saying that suppose it is a blog article on the site, and it takes somebody 35 minutes to read it. Now, he understands that the session will time out after 30 minutes of inactivity, and that is correct. Basically, if somebody starts reading a blog post and they don't do anything else. They just read that one post and then they, it takes them 35 minutes and then either they click on to a different page or they don't do anything at all. That would ultimately be a second session if they did anything after they finished reading the blog post. But Noel wants more clarity. He says, well, what is actually a hit activity and what means inactivity? If the blog post is read without any hit activity, then when will the session time out? And if the only interaction is scrolling in the browser downward to read the article, is that considered a hit, i.e. is there activity that will reset the session? 
and he's talking about the default behavior and the default concept definition of sessions in Google Analytics. Now, this is something that I could tell you. I could give you all kinds of different words to describe this, but I think it's much easier to go into a browser window and just show you exactly how these things work. Now, here we are in the real-time report in Google Analytics, and you can see here that I am on my own website looking at the courses page and then the page for analytics course. And you can confirm that by looking at another tab in my browser window. You can see I'm on this page, and it's showing up here in our Google Analytics real-time report. And I just refresh this page view so you can see on the page views per minute, it's basically been a minute since I've looked at this page. And I've, seen, I've looked at this page several times while I was setting up this video. And that's just pretty standard work. Now, if I don't do anything, if I don't do anything with this page, it just sort of goes away over time. It just decays and you can see that chart just keeps on winding down. Now, what happens if I do stuff within a page? So if I'm going here and I'm scrolling down, does that change anything? Now look here, okay, I'm scrolling down. Nothing's happened in my real-time report. There's no more page views, there's no more hits, nothing's being sent to Google Analytics. So ultimately, even if I was scrolling and I just kept on scrolling up and down forever, this would eventually time out. I would lose my session, and unless I went back to that site, it would consider me as a bounced visitor because I only viewed one page on that session. Now, how do you confirm this? This is something that's a little bit more advanced in Google Analytics, but if you want to understand exactly what's happening behind the scenes in your Google Analytics account, I would encourage you to install this Chrome extension called the Google Analytics Debugger. And then when you install that, you can put it into your Chrome. And so here we are looking at my site with the Google Analytics Debugger next door. You can do this in the view, and you can look at your console section in Chrome, and that's how you can get to this. And if we scroll down and we take a look here, we can see that we are initializing Google Analytics we are sending a page view for the first page view that ends up happening here. And then we send a second page view because I'm actually sending it to two different properties at the same time. And that's about it. Nothing's really happening other than that. So this is what happens with our tracking. And no matter how much I scroll, nothing else happens. Look at this. If I scroll, nothing's happening. So this would basically be one hit. Now, what happens if another hit happens? So I have an external link right here. If I were to click on this thing, I'm going to click on it and open it in a new tab. You see here, oh, an event actually happens here. An event event category is an external link, and it's saying what external link it went to. So I have auto event tracking in place to track when somebody goes to an external site. In this case, they're going to the analytics course website from Jeffalytics. Now, it looks pretty similar, but that is a completely different website. And so if we look in here, that is tracking it, and that extends the session. Now, let's confirm that in our real-time report. So if we go into our analytics, notice how if we go in here and then we go to events, we can see this hit that ended up happening here. So a hit happened very recently within the last minute, what I just clicked on, and that extended my session. So ultimately, the session gets extended when you do any kind of event firing, but it does not happen during scroll tracking. So the original question that Noel had is, does scroll tracking affect the way that we are tracking in Google Analytics? And the answer is no. Unless you use event tracking to track scroll tracking, nothing is going to be happening here. So that 35 minutes of reading the blog post, even if they're scrolling, even if they read thousands of words, that is still considered a balanced visit, and it still ends the session after the 30-minute window. And if they were to click on anything afterwards, they would be going to a new session. So that's how sessions work, and that's the answer to your question, Noel. Now, Noel has a second question that I wanted to answer as well. And he says, a page view measures a user viewing a piece of content. What does viewing mean? Okay, that's a great question because we're not always sure what viewing means, and it's a terminology thing. So let's go back into Google Analytics and go back to the Jeffalytics website. Now, I wish there was a better definition than this, but ultimately a page view just means that this page was loaded. So if I refresh this and... Okay, reload the page. That happened almost instantaneously. If we go back to our real-time report, we go back to our content section, you can see here now there is a new page view that just happened. And all that happened was I refreshed the page. Now, if you want to get technical on this, a page view is basically any time that a page is loaded and the JavaScript code is executed. So a page view happening without JavaScript is not a view. So there's no page view. So generally speaking, since JavaScript is a client-side language, meaning that it runs within your browser, as you can see here, this is all code that we can see within our browser. Since JavaScript is client-side, a view simply means that the browser executed the JavaScript code. Now, we think of a view as somebody viewing it physically with their eyes, but obviously if a bot or if somebody who's using a screen reader who is visually impaired 
they would be viewing the page as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean viewed with your eyes. That's what I think of it as, but that's not necessarily what it means. It just means that the browser executed the JavaScript code and that's what a view is. So hopefully that answers your question, Noel, on what a view is. Now, if you like this definition and you wanna learn more about Google Analytics, I would definitely encourage you to check out our analytics course. And you can find out more about us at analyticscourse.net slash YouTube. Now, why would you consider joining the Google Analytics course? Because it helps you become Google Analytics certified. We can help you tackle your biggest analytics problems immediately. And you can ask as many questions as you want with unlimited support in our private forum where I'm answering questions, my team is answering questions, and other students are answering questions as well. Plus our gigantic Facebook group where you can have your questions answered as well. And the best part is you can stay up to date with lifetime 24 seven access to all of our materials. So I would encourage you to check out our analytics course at analyticscourse.net slash YouTube.